one of the big things that you, this gives you is the simpler way to extend your architecture to the cloud. So if you have Ignition already, you're running it in multiple different locations, and you want to spin something up that's centralized monitoring, centralized access, um, something that's sitting um, up in the cloud that you have multiple different Ignition gateways connected to, um, it makes an easy way to do that. Uh, it has MQTT uh, built into it, so it actually ships with all the MQTT modules. I'll mention more about that in a minute. Um, and so if you're using MQTT IOT in order to send your information from the different locations, um, they would just need that MQTT transmission module, and then you can access all of that centrally. You've got the broker and you've got the MQTT engine uh, built into Ignition Cloud Edition. But yeah, also, if you wanted to use the Ignition Gateway Network, you certainly can do that as well. Um, and it's a real nice way to spin up that piece of a high level if you don't have it already inside an architecture. Of course, you're not going to be running it for an individual plant or an individual location because you want to have local device communication uh, and you want to have that on premise. And if the connection to the cloud goes down, you still want to be able to um, have everything up and running but it's a really great solution for centralized things, anything that you would have where you could have information, basically centralized kind of dashboard. And then I think it's gonna open up a number of different possibilities for applications that folks haven't been able to do in the past too. Uh, one thing that you can do, it mentions that on this slide that you can integrate with a full range of predictive analytics, machine learning services that are offered by the cloud providers, really in the same way that you do a standard ignition. Of course, spinning up inside Cloud Edition makes it so that you have local access to those. It's on the same networks. It's um, right alongside where these cloud providers are offering these services. Uh, and your communication there is generally over uh, RESTful web services to the different pieces. I'll jump to the next slide here. The different Cloud Edition, since it's running inside the cloud, it allows you to utilize the cloud storage that's up there as well. You saw Kevin Collins set a certain size for storage when you're spinning that up. Um, of course, folks can spin up their own storage. They can have additional storage that's going to these. Um, and if you're using a database in the cloud, uh, AWS, it would be RDS, generally speaking. That's really easy to extend or expand uh, storage on as well if you need to. Um, start out with something smaller and then go to something bigger as required or you can just start out with something relatively big storage is, is pretty cheap inside the cloud depending on what storage you choose to use the architectures that are enabled are a variety of different architectures but hybrid architectures are one of the big ideas that you have that are that are possible and if we take a look at some of the highlights of hybrid architectures on the next slide here. Um, the standard ignition platform provides a whole variety of things for on-premise. The cloud edition provides a variety of things that are in the cloud and gives you kind of the best of both worlds if you marry those up. So that said, Kevin, uh, let me go ahead and pass it over to you and you can talk a little bit and show uh, some of the architecture diagrams when it comes to what this looks like for a hybrid architecture. This isn't the only architecture that you can use with Cloud Edition, um, but it's something that we think is gonna be probably the most common thing that folks start out with for, for most customers who already have on-site installations. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. This is definitely an exciting building block for a lot of really comprehensive architectures, much, more broad than what we were able to showcase in the demo today. Being able to unlock some of the capabilities within AWS, within Azure, and quickly couple those with Ignition makes for some pretty powerful capabilities. And we're looking forward to providing some templates for you know some good patterns ways to deploy Ignition Cloud Edition in concert with some of these other cloud technologies. So things like the AWS cloud formation templates, those are going to really expedite how we roll these these complex architectures out. And we're, we're looking forward to being able to share those um, with the community in the future. You know, when we look at this hybrid architecture that we're talking about, Again, it's very familiar to some of what we've described. Cloud Edition sitting up 
as kind of a top level point to push data, visualize it, integrate with some of those other services, all in a way that you can quickly provision, easily scale as your needs grow. Um, so we can also do redundancy. You know, there's there's ways to deploy that in a way that gives you the kind of fault tolerant guarantees that you need. So leveraging things like availability zones and deploying your instances across those gives you the ability to know that, for example, those two Cloud Edition instances aren't running on the same host in a data center uh, to where if, if, if a compute uh, node fails, you lose both. So there's there's great ways to roll that out, just the same as you would do with standard Ignition. You can do that in a cloud form with Ignition Cloud Edition. Now, in terms of pricing, that is one aspect of Cloud Edition that is a little different, and I think there's some really compelling benefits to what we've got there. Kevin, I'm going to pass it back to you to kind of walk sure. us through that. And before we jump to that, um, maybe if we can go back to the previous slide, there were a whole slew of questions that came in about if Cloud Edition is running in the cloud, how do we connect to local devices? This architecture diagram answers those questions. So the whole idea of if you're connecting to devices, you'll generally want something that has on-premise device connectivity. Most devices have polling protocols anyway, and the idea of polling from the cloud down to the different devices generally isn't a good idea. Um, often devices don't have the ability to be secured or encrypted for the communication. Um, I'd say 90, 95% of devices just don't support the secure protocols there. Um, there are a handful that do. Um, if you are connecting over OPC UA or the devices are connecting um, over MQTT, uh, specifically over Sparkplug, even if it's not Sparkplug, but Sparkplug makes it easier, um, you do have the ability from Cloud Edition to connect down in those ways. Um, so Cloud Edition does support OPC UA um, in terms of a protocol, and it does support um, MQTT. But generally, if you're talking to devices, it's going to be using native protocols that aren't the modern protocols that are out there, and therefore having a local ignition gateway that's going to be doing some of that local polling and then communicating back up to Cloud Edition would be the typical way to do it. If you've got 30 plants, you normally have 30 small installations of ignition. Uh, it could be whatever size you want that are at each one of those locations that are talking to the local PLCs. You could do local HMI or you could just have that be a data conduit that was a real lightweight license um, and then send that back up to Cloud Edition in that case. All right, yeah, let's jump over to pricing. Uh, I know everybody's very interested about that. Uh, so you can purchase and use Cloud Edition both through AWS and Azure. AWS is available today. As I mentioned earlier, Azure is coming shortly. So it's not available today, but we're trying to roll that out as soon as we can. Fully hosted and fully deployed on these cloud platforms and it deploys into your environment. So if you have your AWS account, you have your Azure account that's sitting there you log into your account um, and then you deploy it inside that. It's a pay-as-you-go model or it is an annual subscription model. So the pay-as-you-go is hourly, it's on demand. There have been a few questions that came in. If you spin it up and you spin it back down, uh, what are you paying for? Do you pay for a whole month? Do you pay for a big amount? Do you just pay for the time that you actually use it? And the answer is you pay for the time that you actually use it. So if you spin it up for an hour and you spin it back down, you're only paying for an hour. There was a question about demo mode inside here. Um, because of this on-demand pricing, it's gonna cost you a couple bucks to spin it up for an hour. Um, so we didn't feel the need to have a, a demo mode in there if you if you uh, can't get somebody to give you an account that has at least you know four or five bucks on it to try this out, then you might need to figure some things out organizationally. But it, it's a real simple model. Um, of course, if you're spinning something up and you're running it for a whole month, then that hourly gets multiplied through. And if you're gonna run it for a whole year, we have some discounts in there to be able to do just an annual subscription. We're expecting to have it 24 seven during that period. Uh, you, one of the nice things here from a number of organizations is you can use OpEx instead of CapEx um, for this type of thing. 
Um, so OPEX generally is recurring types of payments that you can do to things and it's smaller amounts. CapEx would be big capital expenditures. Um, and for a lot of organizations, this moves the ability to have ignition that's running in the cloud instead of being a big standard license upfront. Um, you can pay monthly uh, for a smaller amount and it potentially can come out of a different budget. Now the actual numbers, we wanted to share those as well. These numbers as they are captured here are what we have on AWS uh, and the numbers inside Azure basically match this almost exactly. So um, we, we're far enough along with the Azure deployment that we've actually gotten most of these things set up inside Azure. And I'm able to say confidently that you're going to be able to, to hit very similar pricing inside Azure. Almost identical. There, there shouldn't be any significant difference between the two. There's a couple of things with the pricing on Azure where um, you can go bigger and bigger and bigger um, as opposed to just going to this 4XL, but it, you have diminishing returns over time. So that said, uh, you can see the center one there, the M6i X large is generally, uh, that's what we're calling our vendor recommendation. The power between each one of these is about twice as much or half as much between each one. We have benchmarks. We're going to be releasing those benchmarks as part of our overall benchmarking information. So we have the ignition architecture guide and benchmarking, and that's that's all sitting there so that you'll be able to get a sense of uh, about how much power these things have. But uh, you could also take a look at CPU. Um, and so an X large is basically a four core. The large is a two core. The T3 medium, technically behind the scenes, it's a two core, but it's basically the equivalent of a one core. And then the two X large is twice that and the 4X large is twice that. So that's an eight core and a 16 core. And the pricing doesn't double between each one, but it does scale up between each one. Uh, and the idea was if you're spinning up something really simple, go with the T3 medium, uh, that should work out fine for you. As you get bigger, you can go bigger. If you're spinning up an average size system, you might wanna do that M6IX large um, that you start out with. And then if you take a look, so on the left is the hourly pricing, on the right is the annual pricing. Uh, as this slide's been up for a minute, you probably already looked at that. So you can see the annual pricing splits it up by software per year. Uh, and so you're choosing to basically pick that instance size and say, I'm going to be running this 24-7. What we expect a lot of folks to do is start with the hourly, find the size that you think that you're going to need. Um, just go ahead and start with that, spin up the system. If that size is handling it for you, if you think that you've sized it appropriately, then you can switch over to this annual pricing. You're gonna save 35%, as you can see in the far right, if you're doing the annual pricing versus if you're just paying per, per month uh, as these things are billed. So, and that's if you're running 24 seven. Of course, if you're just spending things up and spending them down, then the hourly pricing is always gonna be better for you. So we wanted to provide some options and make it flexible there as well. I also wanted to mention Ignition is not SaaS. Um, SaaS is software as a service. Um, Ignition Cloud Edition is not a SaaS product. This is being spun up inside your environment. You're signing up with AWS or Azure. You have your company spin that you're doing through there and you're spinning that up inside the, the marketplace. It's not a service that we're managing. It's not something that we are doing and just providing you an IP. Um, you're doing the same type of thing that Kevin Collins just did, which is uh, to spin it up inside your own infrastructure, um, and then you have full control over it. There was a question earlier if that EC2 instance in either US or what's inside Azure is going to have the option of running on Windows or if it's just Linux. For now, it's just Linux. Uh, we haven't had a lot of uh, questions or requests for spinning up a Windows image, uh, and I don't think that uh, we have any plans to do that or to explore it. So uh, it's probably going to remain just Linux, at least for the moment, but we are always listening to feedback from the community um, and that's that's important to us. So never say never. <laughs> so if, if there's a high demand for Windows instances, uh, it might be something that we explore. Which modules are part of Cloud Edition? Uh, these are the preloaded modules uh, sitting right here. And these basically come with it. So you have perspective, you don't have vision, um, so it's just perspective. It's intended to be running inside the web and web visualization probably makes a lot more sense than having uh, vision. So if you want vision, you use standard edition, you can spin that up in the cloud or not. Um, but this is the prepackaged set of modules. 
Um, so you can see its perspective, SQL Bridge, OPC UA, not the drivers, but uh, the device drivers, but it is an OPC UA client and server, um, which makes it nice for connecting to other systems that have OPC UA that are running in the cloud. Uh, reporting, uh, EAM, uh, Enterprise Administration, Tag Historian, Alarm Notification, this new Mongo uh, uh, module is part of this. Uh, web development, it says web deployment, that's actually web development, that's the web dev module. Um, so if you want to host RESTful endpoints, that's built in directly, so uh, easy to do that. Twilio notification and voice notification are, are all part of it as well. Uh, and then we're, as I mentioned earlier, we have the MQTT modules there as well from SiriusLink. So all three of them, engine, distributor, and transmission are part of this. I'll skip the next slide just to make it, just for the sake of time to get to more questions here. I mentioned MongoDB module, that's part of it. Uh, we also have more modules that we are working on for cloud edition modules or cloud connector modules. Uh, none of these modules are exclusive to Cloud Edition, uh, I should mention. So anything that is a module for Cloud Edition, MongoDB module, other modules that we create, we're also going to make those available for standard uh, edition ignition. So they'll be right on our pricing page. You can take those. And in fact, the MongoDB module is already there. Um, so you can buy that for standard edition of ignition as well. A couple of questions about Cloud Edition modules. One of them is, can I add inductive automation modules to Cloud Edition? So we just showed the different modules that are included. Um, if you want to add additional modules, Cloud Edition is not the version to use for that. So Cloud Edition is locked and bundled to those modules that you saw right there in terms of modules from inductive automation. Uh, and if you need different modules than that module set, uh, you'll be looking at standard uh, edition of Ignition. So just spinning that up inside the cloud. So for example, if you need vision inside the cloud, um, you would use the standard version of Ignition, uh, just buy a perpetual license, spin that up inside the cloud. So Cloud Edition comes with that module set, and that's the only module set that you get from inductive automation. Can I add third-party modules? So Cepasoft is one of our strategic, or you know, one of our solutions partners. Um, we've renamed a couple of uh, areas that we have folks in. So they're one of our solutions partners, and they have, uh, MES modules that you might be aware of already, uh, those modules can be added to Cloud Edition. And so that's with a separate mod license. Um, that license comes from uh, Cepasoft in that case. Any other third party who does third party modules can also offer those modules as additions to Cloud Edition. Uh, 